The world is filled with many great and amazing wonders. Now, some of these wonders are naturally formed by Earth and nature itself, and others are made by man. And for those man-made structures, some are so ancient, and some are more recent technological advancements. But the thing that they all have in common is that we all scratch our heads wondering how these things were made and what they were useful for. What's up, everybody? My name is Dave Wapple, and welcome to FTD Facts, and more specifically, welcome to our episodes that we're doing every single Friday, where we look at great technological achievements that man has done. For these next upcoming episodes, we're going to be looking at military technology. And with that, we are going to go into today's topic, and that is good old-fashioned Sweden's adaptive camo. And we're going to find out how it's used, how it was made, and how effective it actually is. And before I get in this video, I want to let you guys know with this new series, we've developed a playlist for it. Be sure to favorite this playlist so you can stay up to date with our videos around this particular series. Also hit that subscribe and bell notification. But let's get into talking about adaptive technology. But before we do that, we got to understand a little bit of history with camouflage. Within history, there have been many different ways to camouflage soldiers, installations, tanks, aircrafts, and boats. Camouflage is the process of using many different forms of materials to make an item hide from plain sight. Now, it's not to be confused with invisibility because that's not necessarily the case here. But simply, it is a way to trick the eye or trick a computer from seeing what is in front of it. And for history, the first real form of camouflage that was used was on naval ships. One of the earliest stories of camouflage dates back from the 4th century, where Roman writer Vegetus wrote about ships using what was known as Venetian blue during the Gaelic Wars in 54 and 56 BC. Now, this concept came from Julius Caesar's army, where they painted their ships so they could spy on the coasts of Britain. But if I were to ask you to define or think of camouflage in today's concept, the first image that might pop into your head would simply be a sniper in a ghillie suit or a soldier's uniform. However, that form of camouflage didn't come around until about the 19th century. For example, one of the first real units to use some form of camouflage was the Roger Rangers, who were a British attachment that wore green, which helped thwart off the enemy on fields. As a matter of fact, one really interesting story that I read about when it came to America's camouflage in the Second World War was that America really didn't use all too much camouflage. If you go back and look at photos of history, you'll see it's very plain sort of outfits. They don't have that camouflage pattern. Now, there was a reason why. Now, of course, I do want to mention that not all soldiers did this. For example, airborne individuals definitely masked themselves up put stuff in their helmets to make them blend in more. But overall, compared to today's world of camouflage, America as a whole decided not to issue uniforms to what was known as frog skin type camouflage. The reason for this was because Germany was actually already using this form of camouflage and US officials didn't want US soldiers to be confused with enemy troops. Makes a lot of sense. However, by the end of the Second World War, camouflage had been introduced into air forces and navies from many different countries around the world. For land vehicles, they used all sorts of different types of camouflage patterns. One of the main enemies of land, especially during the Second World War, was aerial attacks and reconnaissance. Depending on the terrain from desert to woodland, all sorts of different technologies were used, from a simple paint job to throwing tree branches onto a vehicle. Now, as technology got better and better with camouflage, we figured out a way to absolutely master hiding vehicles through the visible spectrum, which the visible spectrum is how you and I see through our eyes. When patterns got so effective, the militaries realized they needed other ways to find vehicles, and therefore they developed ways to detect vehicles through radar or more specifically infrared. Infrared is simply the process of finding something through a form of radiation. 
sometimes known as infrared radiation or called infrared light. It is electromagnetic radiation with longer wavelengths than those of visible light. And therefore, because of that, it's generally invisible to the human eye. However, to counter what we see through infrared, militaries from around the world had to get extremely intelligent. For example, the Grumman B-2 mixes cool air with its exhaust to remain hidden from infrared signatures. However, infrared makes up what is known as the electromagnetic spectrum which covers ultraviolet, visible light, shorter to mid and longer infrared signatures, microwaves, and longer microwaves. As for most microwave signatures, it is visible via radar and is camouflaged with stealth technology, which is also present in the Grumman B-2 bomber. Now, for some vehicles, they have what is known as multi-spectral camouflage, which is present in vehicles like the German Martyr 1A5. Now, one thing that is really fascinating when it comes to camouflage is some of the science actually comes from our knowledge and study of insects. Certain insects, such as the tree frog and some species of moths, have what is known as multispectral camouflage. Therefore, it can hide not only from the visible spectrum, but as well infrared spectrum. Now, the reason I bring up all of these particular spectrums is because adaptive technology really works well within infrared spectrums. And besides the B2's way of hiding itself from the infrared signature, there is also a really cool technology called Peltier cooling plates. So what are Peltier plates? Well, they are actually small plates that work without moving parts which actually makes Peltier plate technology not only low in maintenance, but it's also really quiet. Named after Jean-Charles Athanase Peltier, who discovered in 1834 that heat could be emitted or absorbed if an electric current passes across a junction of two materials. This is also known as the thermoelectric effect. And as a matter of fact, this technology works very much the same when it comes to Sweden's adaptive camouflage. So adaptive camouflage was created by Sweden's main defense company known as BAE. The technology for adaptive camouflage expanded on the technology of these Peltier plates. And therefore, this technology was used in its own world-renowned unique way. In the 1990s, Sweden began experimenting on ways to hide IR or infrared signatures by tinkering with temperature modulation. The initial results of this technology that Sweden was working on was, first of all, way too complex, B, expensive, and C, well, it cost a lot of energy to use. However, by 2005, a new program came into Sweden known as the Steerable and Controllable IR Signature Program, which funded simply the adaptive camo technology. And with that, by 2011, Sweden had released its finished product to the world, and it was extremely impressive. So what the adaptive technology is, it's basically a form of Peltier cooling plate. However, they are extremely small, being 5.5 inch hexagon tiles that are placed over top of the vehicle's armor. And it is amazingly effective. When these tiles actually activate, they can heat up or cool down any spot on the tank immediately. And therefore, they can make any vehicle look like any shape it wants within the IR spectrum. It's crazy. You could almost take a tank and make it shape and look like the form of a car or simply the bush behind it. The other thing that also helps with this technology is that the armor also has external sensors that scans its surroundings and knows how cool things are and how cool the plates need to actually be. And of course, you might be wondering how effective is this particular technology? Well, let's put it simply. If you looked through an infrared scope at that tank, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. And even some of the most amazing and impressive computer systems cannot tell the difference when this thing is activated. Now, as for the size of these plates, the reason they are so small is because pretty much if you get up close, you don't want to over pixelate the image and that's how you can get detected. 
But however, when it comes to planes or boats, there is major talks about this particular technology being applied to them. However, BAE has stated that those plates don't need to be as small simply due to the fact that either a plane is very far away or a boat is very far away, so therefore you'd be okay. Currently, this adaptive technology has been put on Sweden's famous CV-90, and what makes this technology extremely effective is if, say, an enemy unit was to find a bunch of these plates lying around, well, they wouldn't be able to use it on their tank, simply due to the fact because Peltier plates or the adaptive Peltier plates are specifically made for each individual unit or tank that is put on. And to give you an idea of how many of these plates are used for this CV-90, it uses over a thousand plates to cover its armor. But like I said, they need smaller plates to be able to not be detected from under 500 meters. Either way, it's just amazing technology that is coming out of Sweden. Sweden, for some strange reason, is just the country that is all about stealth. Maybe it's due to the fact that they've got Russia up to deal with from time to time. I don't necessarily know. For example, Sweden also developed the AIP engine, which makes their submarines extremely, extremely quiet. You cannot detect them. However, thanks for joining me on episode one of our amazing technology that is from all around the world, which again reminds me, if you guys like this stuff, be sure to favorite this playlist right here because in our next episode, we're gonna be looking at precision firearms and precision firearms is, well, those bullets that if you fire them, they can actually curve. It's really cool technology. And these episodes happen every single Friday here on FTD Facts. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. But thanks for watching. My name is Dave Wapple. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day and be sure to leave your comments, suggestions, and your knowledge of cool technology around the world down there in the box below. You guys have yourself a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, thanks for checking out our episode one of our new series. And of course, don't forget to like this playlist. Also with that here on FTD Facts, every single Monday, I always learn about new countries from around the world. So check this playlist out right here. It's great to learn about new places and expand your mind. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.